our story today will weave through our service, but it begins many years ago in the land of Transylvania. There, in a mountain village watered by quick rushing streams and shadowed by great forests of beech trees, there was a village of small wooden houses with single sh shingled, dark shingled roofs. The people in the village were of the Unitarian religion, and they wanted a church of their own. A church set on the hillside, they decided, where they could look up and see the lights of the church glowing at night, reminding them of the glow of their community together. Let's return to our story. All the people of the village labored long and hard to build themselves a church. The stonemasons hammered sharp chisels to cut great blocks of gray stone, then set the stone into stout and sturdy walls. The glaziers made tiny glass panes and fitted them neatly into the windows with leaded lines. The foresters sawed tall beech trees into enormous beams and laid the trusses for the ceiling, then covered the roof with close-fitting wooden shingles that wouldn't leak a drop of rain. The carpenters carved wood for the pair of wide opening doors, setting them on strong pegs so that the doors hung straight and square. A bell was brought from a faraway city, then hoisted by ropes with a heave and a hoe to the top of the tower. The weavers wove fine cloths for the altar table, cloths embroidered with flowers and edged with lace. The smiths hammered black iron into tall lampstands and hammered thin bronze into shining oil lamps. Finally, when the building of the church was done, the painting of the church could begin. The painters mixed bright colors, royal red and shimmering gold and brilliant blue, and everyone in the village, old and young, women and men, boys and girls, came to decorate their church. They painted flowers, they painted trees, they painted designs around the windows and different designs around the doors. And at the end of the day, when it was finished, when their church was finally done, all the people of the village stood back to admire it and then to sing a song of happiness and praise. Their village had a church now, a church set on the hillside looking down upon the village as a mother looks down upon her sleeping child. Have you ever watched a candle burn? The fire is alive. Watch it. It flickers. It dances on the wind. It changes with every breath of air. Fire is alive. It is born, it grows, and it dies. But fire is special. It can live again and again. In this time of long nights and short days, let us seek the light within. Looking at the flame lit here today, notice how the soft, quiet, and gentle flame tamely rises from its wick. Yet, just by touching a dry twig, it has the power to become a bigger fire. It can light up the room, light up a house or a church. We think of fire as passion, as a fire within us that lights our way, flames our spirit, ignites us to action, draws us together into community. May this flame, this simple, quiet flame, touch the dry twigs that guard our hearts, allowing the power of light to penetrate our self-protection and show us the amazing, wonderful, radiating heat and light that resides in each of us. During this holiday season, we will also light our Advent candles. This is the second Sunday of Advent. Our first Sunday of Advent reminded us to be patient. This second Sunday of Advent, we light the flame in hope that darkness will be dispelled. In this holy season, May the darkness of winter be dispelled in this festival of lights. And may the darkness of ignorance be dispelled in the strength of compassion, reason, and of sharing. Blessed be. 
We eat now, announced an elder of the village, because everyone was hungry after their long day's work. And later tonight, we will come back to pray. So the people of the village went down the hillside to their homes and their suppers, all except one little girl named Zora and her father, who stayed behind. They had brought their own bread and cheese, and they ate their food slowly. As they ate, Zora ran from pitcher to pitcher with her footsteps echoing off the stone walls. See how pretty the church is! See how grand! Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But Father, we have not finished. What do you mean? There are tall iron lampstands all along walls, but there are no lamps. The church will be dark when the people c come back. Ah, no, Zora. The light of the church comes from its people. You shall see. He rang the bell to call the people to worship, then took his daughter by the hand and led her back outside. They waited on the grassy hillside next to their beautiful church of strong gray stone. The sun had set behind the mountains and night was coming soon. Yet, off in the distance, we could see growing, in the growing darkness, tiny points of light came from many directions and moved steadily up the hill. Each family is entrusted with a lamp. Each family lights its own way here. Where is our family's lamp? Your mother is carrying it. She will be here soon. Off in the distance, Zora saw many lights moving closer together, gathered into one moving stream, all headed the same way, going larger and brighter all the time. Zora's mother arrived, bearing a burning oil lamp in her hands. The mother gave the lamp to Zora so she could set their family's lamp high on its tall iron stand. All around the church, other families were doing the same. Soon the church was ablaze with light in every corner, for all the people of the village had gathered to pray and to sing. All through the worship service, Zora had watched the lights flicker and glow. She watched her family's lamp most of all. When the service was over, she took the shining lamp from the lampstand. Its curved sides were warm and smooth in her hands. She gave it to her mother who carried the lamp home with the flame lighting the way. The lamp flame lit their house when they returned home. Thinking about the day, Zora sat next to her mother. Father, Father said the light of the church comes from its people. Yes. But also the people take their light from the church. And we have that light every day. Yes, indeed. And even when we are not in church, even when the lamp is not lit, we carry the light of truth in our minds and the flame of love in our hearts to show us the right way to be. That light, the light from truth and love, will never go out. Never? Never. And this lamp will last for many, many years. When you are grown, we will give the lamp to you. And when your children are grown, you will give the lamp to them. And all of you will carry it back and forth to church every time. But there is only one lamp. To make another, so make another, and let the light grow. And someday, tell your children to make lamps too. And now, good night. The years passed. Zora grew. The lamp came into her care. She kept it polished and clean. And when the bell rang out across the valley to call the people to worship, she carried the lamp back and forth to the church on the hillside, the flame always lighting her way. When the time came, she made more lamps and gave them to her children, who made more lamps and gave them to their children. And so it went, 
on through the years, even until today. And always, the light of truth and the flame of love from that Unitarian church on the hillside continued to grow and show them and us the way. As far as I know, we don't have a separate ceremony to honor fire. We do have a water communion and a flower communion that honors the earth. So today, I want us to come together to celebrate the common fire we each carry, that fire of love and that fire of commitment that we acknowledge week after week in congregations across the country and the nation. We have always known that fire was special. Long, long ago, before people made matches or candles or even made houses, people knew that fire was special. There was the great fire in the sky, the sun, which made the earth warm and made night into day. And there were the smaller fires that people made, fires that cooked their food and that kept them warm and brought them light. We honored the fires because fire was special. Fire was more than human. Fire has power. It can create and it can destroy. It can bring light and it can burn. Fire can be wonderful and fire can be terrible. We have to be careful with the fire we carry. Fire draws us closer. We're attracted to flames and gather to stare into the leaping sparks and burning wood. Campfires and bonfires mesmerize us as we join around them to share in music and companionship. Fire draws us closer. And so we have long thought that fire is something sacred and holy. People all over the world give fire a special place in their religions. We have sacred fires in our temples. We set sacred lamps on our altars. We light sacred bonfires outside on hilltops and in groves. In Tibetan Buddhist practices, we light fire pujas for purification, to pacify harms, increase benefit to life, and to control the conditions of life. Pele is the goddess of fire in Hawaiian culture. She's understood to have created the island with her volcanic forces. And she also destroys, reminding us of the power of the earth. In Hindu culture, the ritual of arti is done to express movements, moments in life, such as love, prayer, or gratitude. It involves lighting the flames of arti that illuminate so people can better see the form of the deity. And during this time of year, as days get short and nights become long, many faiths have fire rituals to remind themselves that even in the heart of darkness, there comes light. Solstice practices focus on light returning, burning the Yule log in celebration. Las Posadas is a Mexican tradition with children carrying lit candles from house to house as they reenact the journey of Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem. Kwanzaa is an African-American celebration that includes lighting candles in recognition of their seven principles. In churches at Christmas time, many Christians light four candles on an advent wreath. During the eight days of Hanukkah, Jews light the eight candles of the menorah. At Diwali, Hindus set up small lamps all around their house. And when Unitarian Universalists gather, we light a chalice. This is our sacred fire. The flame gives light and warmth, just like all fires. It's also a symbol of the love and commitment that binds us together. The circle of our family keeps us warm, both our family at home and our Unitarian Universalist family. We help each other, and we share food and drink with each other, and we take care of each other because that's what families are supposed to do. And we invite everyone to become a part of our family because the Unitarian Universalist Chalice is a chalice of love. So today we're honoring fire. We're taking time to notice the sacred aspect of this element. I want each of you to take a moment to think about fire now. 
And what ignites that fire inside of you? What brings to you that feeling, a flame of love and of commitment in your heart? I invite you to sit back in your chair. Put both feet on the ground. Quiet your mind however you can. Breathe in and breathe out several times into the quiet today. Think about what brings you passion. What do you feel flaming right in the center of your heart? What do you feel a deep commitment to? What do you love? Those of you with children can take a minute to ask them what they love the most. What do they feel passion for? Each of you will find a flame in the chair pocket in front of you. Write that love or commitment down on your flame. Something you're willing to share with others. As you come up front to celebrate our fire communion, you will place your written flame in this bowl. And later, as you leave today, you'll be asked to take a flame home with you to carry what someone else has written. So you will carry with you a part of the flame of passion of this community. So today, for the fire communion, this is something we haven't tried before. I'm going to invite you all to come up, just like in the water communion, where you pour water into the common bowl. We have a common bowl up here with oil to the side and oil droppers. You will line up on both sides and drop some oil into the common bowl, and then you can circle back up into the center aisle. And the bowl up here is for your flames. As you bring them up, you can drop them in there. As you wait here to add your oil, I invite you to think about the community, the love you bring and the love you receive, the commitment you bring and the commitment you receive. to face the world's coldness, a chalice of warmth, to face the world's terrors, a chalice of courage, to face the world's turmoil, a chalice of peace. May its glow fill our spirits, our hearts, and our lives. I invite you to join me in a blessing. Blessing this oil and this flame. After each of my blessings, join by saying together, this fire is sacred. This oil is sacred. It is made sacred by the many hands that have added their part to the common bowl. This fire is sacred. The flame of this community is lit by what each of us adds and what each of us contributes. This the fire, fire is sacred. It glows from the gifts we offer. It is lit by the fire we hold in our hearts. This, this fire, fire is, is sacred. sacred. May it continue to bless this community with a fierce, fiery commitment. This, this fire, fire is, is sacred. sacred. May it continue to flame to life, the power of love, encircling us with what we are grateful for in each other and in our world. This, this fire, fire is sacred. Amen. Our closing words today come from Reverend Lynn Unger. 
I am watching you looking at the candles or the darkness in between them. This is the blessing that we have kindled, this particular dark. If you stand facing me, this is what you will find, the gap between us where our common lives take shape, the space between us that we reach into for love. And you and I are caught between the candles where we cannot help but live in the close and infinite abundance held between the dying and the kindling of the light. We extinguish this chalice, but not the light of truth, the warmth of love, or the fire of commitment. These we hold in our hearts until we are together. May the firmness of the earth be yours. May the flow of the water be yours. May the freedom of the air be yours. May the fierceness of the fire be yours. May all the gifts of this life, the below and the above, be with you now and remain with you always. Blessed be. Amen. <laughs>